All right, now water security and infrastructure is a massive issue for the regions, particularly farming communities. There are calls for a Royal Commission into water, particularly the provision of dams. Regional dams are facing critical levels amid lingering drought conditions. There's also a push to pump up the production of desalination plants to deliver more water supply. For more, the New South Wales Water Minister, Melinda Pavey, joins me now. Minister, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, do you think there's any validity to the uh, call for a uh, Federal Royal Commission into water provision? I think that it's a, a topic on the lips of many people. And uh, my leader, John Barillara, New South Wales Nationals leader, and our government, uh, led by Gladys Berejiklian, you know, we will consider those options. But what I'm doing as the minister is, uh, is making it very clear to my ministerial colleagues and working very well, in fact, with the Victorian Labor Water Minister, Lisa Neville, because uh, we need a, a fairer share. We need to understand that our communities are hurting. We need to get through this drought. Uh, but can I just take a moment, Peter, to rejoice in this rain uh, and the vision and, and the photos mm. that you've just shown uh, from Queensland. I've had great news today. 22 mils at Dubbo, uh, one of our, our most concerning town water communities. Um, it is just, as someone said today, a big slab of rain over Australia. And if it can fall gently and uh, preciously over the next five or six days, it's going to make a difference to everybody. Um, but those, those calls for the Royal Commission uh, into the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, they're very strong and they're very real. Uh, and I'm very aware of that from my time on the ground, whether it's in the north of New South Wales or in the south of New South Wales. Uh, we've got some challenges and we've got to make sure the plan is working as it was set out to work. To look after the environment, you know, I'm hearing too many reports of too many carp throughout the river system. Um, and, you know, it was designed to increase native fish, but it's also um, an acknowledgement too. We've done a really good job protecting our environment. We've given up a lot of water over the past decade or so, um, but I just don't think there is any more to give and we need to prioritise communities, towns through this drought and uh, their very important conversations, which has led to these calls for the Royal Commission. People don't feel they're getting a fair go. Well, Melinda, uh, you're right about the rain, and there's more rain predicted. In fact, we're expected to see uh, a lot of rain over the northern New South Wales area in coming days, and, of course, it may even go further down into that Illawarra and Sydney region, so that will be welcome rainfall. But, and the uh, south, you talked Peter, about some please, of the make it the south as well. And the s make it the south as well. <laughs> Let's hope that it uh, encroaches that far. But you talked about some critical issues. Now, we talk about the Burundong Dam and it's currently, uh, you know, at a critical juncture. Uh, where, is, where is this dam in the scheme of things and, and uh, you know, what sort of levels is it at right now? Look, it's at a very low level, you're right, um, about 1.5 per cent. But this, da this water we've had at Dubbo today, if it's gentle and, it's, uh, and it continues and we get to 100, 200 mils over the next five days, it's going to make every difference in the world. But in the event that that hasn't happened, our government has been responsible. We've set aside $230 million since March last year to ensure we have the infrastructure to keep our towns in water. And when you're talking about big, important towns to the New South Wales economy, such as Dubbo, such as Tamworth, such as Armidale, we have invested in pipelines uh, at Burundong, finding a lower point in the takeoff so we can get to the lower levels of that dam. There's big challenges our agencies have been working through with local communities and with local councils. We've got 89 local councils delivering water across New South Wales and we've been in partnership with each of those communities that need our help, whether it's Brewarrina, Walgut, Burke, uh, or Gyra or Tenterfield, towns that have been really struggling. And towards the end of, uh, of last year, uh, even up until the last couple of weeks, we've been challenged on the coastal areas of northern New South Wales, areas that I represent, where Kempsey, uh, you know, has not had fresh, river, fresh water running through um, the mighty Maclay for about nine weeks. The previous record was around six weeks, but we've had some magnificent rain in the last couple of weeks, really challenged on the Manning system around Taree and Foster. Uh, but we've, we've been working alongside, we've had a team of people and we've given the financial support to our communities to get through this natural disaster that is drought um, and just rejoicing for this very you know this moment 
hoping that this rain continues uh, for another week or so or five days. Whatever we get, it's a blessing, but we need it to be all across New South Wales, um, in the south, in the Sydney catchment. Uh, you know, today I told Parliament, for example, that we actually haven't had a significant increase in the percentage of the Sydney catchment since 2017, March 2017. So nearly two years mm. our Sydney catchment has been dropping week by week. So this is having a big impact. But we're excited by this uh, slab of rain that's sitting across Australia at the moment. And fingers crossed it's going to make all the difference so we can get crops in, support our farmers, uh, grow our cattle uh, and ensure that our, our orchards and our, our, our farms can, can thrive because they have been doing it so tough. And Melinda, there's talk that the Illawarra region could be the home for New South Wales' second desalination plant. Take us through that. Well, it's, the Illawarra is part of the Sydney catchment. Um, we have already introduced the, the Shoalhaven transfers. Shoalhaven Dam was enlarged many years ago with a percentage coming to Sydney. Um, and Shoalhaven is supported uh, through that. It's a mighty fine area which um, has been affected, you know, in a very devastating way by bushfires in recent weeks. But we are, as part of our planning, going out to the community and explaining that we might need a, a desalination plant and communicating that with, uh, with the public. And I'm pleased um, even the, the New South Wales opposition is on board for um, looking at extending um, our capacity to manufacture water in the Illawarra as well. The, uh, the New South Wales government is we're considering and working towards our final business case for doubling the capacity of the Sydney desalination plant. Currently 250 million litres a day, which is about 15% supply in, in Sydney. We are looking at uh, doubling the capacity to, to 500 million litres a day. Uh, so they're, they're big uh, decisions for our government to make, but we're not hiding away from those decisions. I think it was a big shock to Sydney and New South Wales in 2008 when uh, the previous Labor government, uh, in, a, in a moment of crisis, uh, said that they were building the desalination plant. Uh, the difference is we have the resources, we have the support, but we'll take the community with us as we make these decisions uh, to ensure uh, the longevity of, of the Sydney water supply. Melinda, before we go, what is a mobile desalination plant? What does it actually do? Uh, the other name for it is a reverse osmosis unit. It is something that uh, we can put <laughs> into our communities. Currently, we have one in Brewarrina. It was designed to go to Tenerfield, but then we got some rain in Tenerfield and we didn't need it at Tenerfield. It's at Brewarrina and it improves the quality of the water. It's another level of treatment. Uh, we're also in discussions with communities. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've had challenges around Taree and Kempsey. Those communities are looking at putting these, uh, these reverse osmosis treatment plants in to ensure the quality of the water. We have the highest world standards for water quality throughout New South Wales. We need to retain that. Um, we've also uh, prepared to put an, and support the communities of Burke and Walgett with the reverse osmosis plant. But fingers crossed with the sound of the rain on the rooftops across the, the northwest of New South Wales. I just ran into some people from the Gwaida region um, on my way to the studio and I, I saw some very happy faces and uh, I can't wait uh, to get out there. I can't wait to the morning to see um, you know, what's happened and how the rain has fallen.